In this video, I'll show you how you can use dynamic array functions with validation lists to make some pretty cool self-updating drop-down lists. You can even exclude certain items in that list. It's pretty cool. Let's go. This is what I want to achieve. I want to have a list that people can pick from. Okay, we've all seen data validation lists before, and you just create them by going data, data validation. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but what I'd also like is the ability for people to add something of, the, of their own in, let's say, banana. Okay, and it just flags here that this banana has been added. Whereas if somebody then picks apple and notice banana has been added to the list automatically, if somebody picks apple, that's not been added, that's part of the standard list. Okay, and then if somebody else picks zucchini, okay, all right, that's been blocked. Ah, that's been excluded. How have I done that? Well, if I open this up, I've got a little list of exclusions here. Okay, and zucchini is one of the items. Uh, the word banana spelt incorrectly is also blocked. Okay, um, blanks or zeros are also sort of not, not to be picked. Okay, so if I added something like berry, that works. Okay, and then the next time I pick a drop down, berry is here. Okay, in any of these future drop down lists. So self updating. Pretty cool. So how if I use these two tables? What's the magic going on here? Well, ultimately, the, the drop-down list I'm referring to isn't either of these. It's another one hidden under here, under these workings. Let me show you them. So the first little set of workings is pretty straightforward for this first one. This has given me the unique items from the selected list. Okay, so here's my choice column. And it's just grabbing the unique items and sorting them alphabetically using the sort and unique Okay, great. And then it's saying, are any of these excluded? And if they are, then flag them as true. Now, the only one I've got excluded in here is the, um, the zero, okay, the blank. So that's coming up as a blank here. So that's being excluded. Um, let's say I change zucchini to berry, or I added something else in here like apple. Oh, actually, no, that's a bad one because apple's already in the main list. But now you see that berry is in the excluded list. And I've done something else in a second, I'll show you. So this is excluded. How have I done that? Well, all it's saying is, and let me just use Alt Enter to level this out a little bit. It's saying, hey, is there a match between anything in this list and anything in this exclusion? If there is, I'll give it a number, like one record number one, record number two, you know, it just does that. And then the is number is wrapped around it which says if it's a number, true, if it's something else like an error or an A, an a then false. So apple isn't in this list, so false. Banana isn't in the list, so false. Berry is in the list, so true. Zero or blank is in the list, so true. Okay, so how am I using that? Well, that's where one final little set of uh, functions is in here. The list of choices, okay, this little list is now being filtered so filter L3, where this little list is false. So only apple and banana are allowed options from the choices here, apple and banana. Berry is no longer allowed and will no longer appear in my dropdown list. Okay, I should probably add another flag to exclude it. But then what's the final list? Well, if this is my manual list, less exclusions, and I've got my existing list here, I want to append them, remove any duplicates if there happen to be any, and then uh, sort that. Okay, so a bit of a longer formula. Let me show you. It looks a bit crazy, okay? But ignore this bit to start with. I'll explain that in a second. All we're saying is sort unique, okay? Same thing as before. And then we're using the V stack, the vertical stack function to stack the existing choices, okay, with my new list in O3. Okay, so the existing choices is over here, stack that on top, sort them, remove the duplicates, okay? So what's that first bit about? What's this if is error O3? Well, this comes from the very first option here. 
if there's no entries, okay, this list, okay, has no valid options, so it errors out to a calc. So all this little starting bit does is say, hey, if 03 is an error, and don't put that um, hash in there because otherwise you get a spill error type thing. If just that cell is an error, then just give me the list of existing choices, okay? Because nobody's entered anything new in. So there we go. Look, it's a little bit, you know, it's that's that's tricky, okay? There's there's a lot going on there, but it's pretty cool because now I can just come in here, I can pick pear, but I can't type in melon, but I can type in lemon, okay? So how do you do that? Well, you basically just highlight this list range here, data, and go to data validation, and the source, okay, needs to be this little list, okay, Q3 hash, all right? And that's really it. That's your final source. And then your input method or your error message can be a stop with not valid and whatever else you want to put in here. Okay, download this file. There'll be a link in the description below. Check out the description for any future updates to whether this works in Excel for web. If you want to check out how this little formula works, it's just basically saying, hey, if this isn't blank, because I don't want to put a warning if it's blank, and the number of times this exists in choices is zero, then give it a tick. That means it's new. If it, if it doesn't exist in the existing list of choices, then give it a little tick. And I've used an emoji for that. So Windows key, um, sorry, Windows key full stop to add an emoji. So all sorts of options in there. Hope you find this useful. Let me know what you think. Is this too complicated? Is it too confusing? Does it give you some ideas? Can you use this somewhere? Let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.